Good morning, everyone. It's so good to see you, and happy Mother's Day. Man, it's a great day to uh, be back together worshiping uh, live and in person here at Calvary Baptist Church, and I'm so glad that you could join us this morning. Uh, we have just one announcement, and uh, we're kind of getting things rolling again as, as activities and events are going to be able to happen here soon. And that is, uh, you've probably seen the slide of uh, the ladies' Bible study. It's going to start up. This is on Monday nights. It's for teen and adult ladies, and uh, it's going to start on June 8th. And you need to sign up by May 25th. There's a sign-up sheet on the bulletin board by the church office. And if you have any questions, you can see Nicole Rethmeyer. Uh, so ladies, I hope you'll take advantage of that. But uh, I'm so glad you all could be here and, and can worship with us. And I, uh, I'm going to turn it over now to Rob, who's going to lead us in our first song. We want to welcome all of you. And we also want to welcome those of you who are uh, not able to be with us today in person. If you're joining us on the live stream. We appreciate you tuning in, and we hope that you can lift your heart in worship to the Lord. We're going to begin today by singing, O Church Arise. Please stand with me while we begin. O Church Arise, and put your armor on, hear the call of Christ our Captain. Say that they are strong in the strength that God has given with shield of faith with against the devil's lies, an army bold whose battle cry is love, reaching out to those in darkness, our call to war to love thy captive soul but to rage against the captor and with a sword that makes the wounded whole we will fight with faith and valor when faced with trials on every side we know the outcome is secure this will have the prize for which he died an inheritance of nations come see the cross where love and mercy meet as the son of god is stricken then see his foes lie crushed beneath his feet for the conqueror has risen and as the stone is rolled away and christ emerges from thy grave this victory march continues till the day every eye and heart shall see him so spirits come put strength in every stride give grace for every hurdle that we may run with faith to win the prize good and faithful as saints of old still line the way retelling triumphs of his grace we hear their calls and hunger for the day when with christ we stand in glory brethren we have met to worship is our next song this morning in your hymn book you can turn to it at 585. It's on the screen behind me as well. Brethren, we have met to worship. Brethren, we have met to worship and adore the Lord our God. Will you pray with all your power and we try to preach the word? All is vain unless the Spirit of the Holy One comes down. Brethren, pray, and holy manna will be showered all around. Let us love our God supremely. Let us love each other too. Let us love and pray for sinners till our God is all things new. Then he'll call us home to heaven, 
at his table will sit down. Christ will gird himself and serve us with sweet manna all around. If you haven't noticed the theme already, it be here at the beginning of the service, first service back. It's kind of on unity, being together again. And uh, the next song we're going to sing has kind of been a, a theme song for our church over the last uh, year or so as we've gone through understanding what our mission is as a church, that uh, we exist to glorify God by being and making lifetime followers of Jesus Christ. And so we need to be followers of Jesus and make people and help people understand who Christ is so that they also will follow Christ as well. So we're going to sing, We Will Follow. Um, Christ invites the undeserving, leave your nets and follow me. Watching, hearing, loving, serving, slaves of Christ are truly free. Christ has called the church to suffer, your cross and follow me. Love your life, your home, your brother. Gain them for eternity. We will follow, rise up and say, we will follow. sent us to the nations to follow me reach the sinner preach salvation teach the things you've heard and seen we will follow rise up and say we will follow our Lord to the end of Summon his disciples from his throne beyond the skies. You have followed me to paradise. Follow me to paradise. We will follow, rise up and say, We will follow our Lord to the Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can be together, that we can work together for your glory, for your kingdom. Lord, we thank you so much that uh, we have the opportunity again to meet corporately, and we thank you for all of the innovations that have happened over the last uh, many years that have made it possible for us to still worship you uh, during this time. But now, Lord, that we can be together again, we thank you so much for that great blessing. And Lord, we pray that you would give us uh, one voice as we move forward over the next uh, weeks and months. Give us one voice to sing glory and praise to you. Give us one voice as we work for your, your mission of being a 
of us being and us also helping to make lifetime followers of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated. tells us in both the Old Testament as well as in the New Testament to honor our mothers. And uh, that's what <clears throat> this day is about, to give a special honor and a time to lift up our moms in our lives. And uh, as we go to the Lord in prayer this morning, just a few things that I want to, to point us to as we do pray, um, thinking of Mother's Day. Um, and the first thing is to praise the Lord for the mothers that he's given to us, the mothers that he's put into our lives. And thank God for who that is. And uh, the Bible tells us to give thanks in everything, and that includes our mothers. So to give thanks to the Lord for our, our moms, as well as to remember those that on this day, it may be a, a difficult day for them. Um, some have maybe recently lost their mom. There are some in, in here, um, or others even that aren't here this morning, that desire to be a mom. And at this point, the Lord has not blessed in that way. Um, so pray for them. And then we have to remember also that Godly mothers are first godly women, and so to pray that the Lord would help 
and, uh, and encourage and to lift them up and to draw those moms in your life closer to the Lord. And so we're going to spend a time about prayer, and then I will close us in prayer. So let's go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Lord, we are so thankful for the mothers that are in our lives. Thank you so much for the mothers that are in our church and just the impact that they have on each one of us, Lord. Thank you for blessing um, us with our own moms. Um, Thank you, Lord, for how they've uh, worked to mold us and to shape us into who you want us to be. Lord, we think this morning of those who may be struggling, those who um, this may be a difficult day for them. We pray that you just strengthen them and to look to you and to trust in you. Lord, we pray for um, the mothers that are in our lives. Lord, we pray that you would just strengthen them, that that you would help them to be drawn closer to you. Help us um, just to be an encouragement to them today. And I pray, Lord, that you would uh, just help us as we desire to honor moms on this special day. Lord, we pray that you would just bless the remainder of the service, that everything that's said and done would just give honor and praise to you. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. The next song we're going to sing is number 534. There's going to be a video that we're going to watch beforehand, but I want you to turn to it so that as soon as the video is over, we can, uh, we can begin singing it. Five, uh, number 534, called She Will Be Called Blessed, is taken from Proverbs 31. And we've had uh, several of the children of our church have submitted, and some of them aren't all children, some of them are teens, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, those of you teens who did it. We have some 18 and unders who have... <laughs> read uh, portions of Proverbs 31, and we've put that together. And uh, Mother's Day is a very special day, uh, especially May 10th. For me, is a very special day. Because 33 years ago, on May 10th, Mother's Day, I got saved at the age of four. uh, And a dear missionary woman uh, led me to the Lord and showed me how I can be God's child. And uh, then May 10th, 2014 was a special day because that was the day we brought our third triplet home from the hospital, and we were out of the hospital for good at that point. Um, And uh, and then, of course, it's Mother's Day. And so uh, May 10th today is a very very special day. And so thank you, all of you ladies who uh, you are mothers to your children. You carry on mothering duties to other children. And uh, you have led, many of you ladies have worked in the, har- in, in the children's ministries and, and uh, ministered to those children and maybe their spiritual mothers. And so we thank you so much for that. Proverbs 31, read by some of the uh, young people at our church. An excellent wife who can find she is far more precious than jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her and he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not harm all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and works with willing hands. She is like the ships of the merchant. She brings her food from afar. She watches while it is yet night and provides food for her household and portions for her maidens. She considers a field and buys it. With the fruit of her hands, she plants a vineyard. She dresses herself with strength, and it makes her arms strong. 
she perceives that her merchandise is profitable and her lamp does not go out at night. She puts her hands to the distaff and her hands hold the spindle. She opens her hands to the poor and reaches out to the needy. She is not afraid of snow for her household, for all her household are clothed in scarlet. She makes her bed coverings for herself. Her clothes are fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. Strength and dignity are her clothing, and she laughs at the time to come. She makes linen garments and sells them. She delivers sashes to the merchant. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and, and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. She looks well to the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceitful, and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her of the fruits of her hands, and let her works praise her in the gate. Please join me as we sing these two songs, 534 and then 535. We'll sing through this first one twice. Christian home, we'll sing verses one and three. One and three. Our homes are 
We are very thankful for the mothers in our lives, and we do say, Mom, you're amazing, and uh, thank you for all that you've done for us. And I want, to take, I want you to take your Bibles and turn with me to Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2, and we're going to look at verses 3, 4, and 5 this morning for our scripture reading for the sermon. And as you turn in there, uh, if you're physically able, would you please stand for the reading of the scripture? Titus chapter 2, verses 3, 4, and 5. And please follow along or listen to me as I read. It says, Older women, likewise, are to be reverent in behavior, not slanderers or slaves to much wine. They are to teach what is good, and so train the younger women to love their husbands and children. To be self-controlled, pure, working at home, kind, submissive to their own husbands, that the word of God may not be reviled. Let's pray. Father, this morning on Mother's Day, we thank you so much. We thank you for the mothers that you've given to us and to those we love. Lord, thank you so much for your sovereign design in each family. We celebrate our moms. Lord, help each mother to know how awesome she really is. And I pray, God, that your blessing would be upon them this morning. And Lord, while, I, while today is a day of celebration for many, it can also be so difficult for others. And we pray for those who are grieving today because they have lost their mothers. Father, we pray for mothers who are grieving because they've lost a child, whether old or young or not yet born. We know, Lord, that the death of a child breaks a mother's heart. And so we ask that you would be near to them today. Lord, we pray for those who are hurting because they long to have children but don't. And Lord, we ask for your special care upon these ladies. Thank you so much for all that you do for us, for the mothers who have loved us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thank you. You may be seated. So as I was thinking about preaching on Mother's Day, uh, I, I had what I thought was a great idea, okay? I thought I should just do a Zoom call in the service with my mom. Okay, because I could tell the people, my mom is awesome, and if you want your kids to turn out as awesome as me, then you should just listen to what she says, right? Okay, and then I can say, take it away, mom, and then she could, she could go for it, right? Well, I actually, I did a video call with her uh, last week, and I was teasing her that I was going to do something like that, and, and in the call, my mom gave me the look, right? Right? 
You know what I'm saying? That look that can communicate that intricate combination of I love you and I raised you better than that and you better not even think about it or you're dead meat, right? All in one look. The kind of look that only moms can give. Man, I haven't lived at home for nearly 20 years and still from a thousand miles away, my mom can still give that look because she's, she's that awesome. As I thought about it, though, I realized this probably isn't that great of an idea uh, because although my mom is awesome, and I'm sure everyone would agree with me on that, perhaps not everyone would agree regarding my own estimation of my awesomeness. More importantly, my mom is awesome Excuse me, my mom is awesome because of who she is and the way that God has designed her. And you know what? That's true for you too. There's, there's a, a, a personal connection and a personal relationship that we all have with our Heavenly Father as our Creator. And you know, my mom has her own gifts, her own characteristics, her own abilities and personality. She also has her own personal struggles and temptations and weaknesses. And she has her own victories and patterns of growth and that personal relationship that she has with her Heavenly Father. And that, those are the things that are unique to her that make her awesome. And I said that, that, that's what's true about you as well. And uh, God, who has made, made you uniquely you and how you are made, has made you like no one else. And all of us have turned away from our creator through sin, but despite that, he calls each one of us back into a personal relationship with him. He is our father, and we as his children. And it's how God made you, and I specifically want to emphasize this for moms this morning, it's how God made you and your growth in your relationship with him that makes you an awesome mom. And moms, I know it's easy to compare yourself with others, uh, to, to get discouraged that you're not the kind of mom that maybe another woman may be. And envy and frustration can set in. But I want to encourage you, you see, focusing on activities and skills that you don't have is, is only going to distract you. Focusing on God and his desire for you will strengthen you and will help you grow as the awesome mom that God designed you to be. In Titus chapter 2, Paul describes three parenting qualities. Parenting qualities of awesome moms. And they have nothing to do with crafts or sports or hobbies or clothes or any of those things. They have everything to do with who you are in Christ. And so look back with me at Titus chapter 2, verses 3 through 5. I want us to see these, and they're particularly in verses 4 and 5, but let's read all three verses here again. It says, "...older women likewise are to, do, to be reverent in behavior." not slanderers or slaves to much wine. They are to teach what is good, and so train the younger women to love their husbands and children, to be self-controlled, pure, working at home, kind and submissive to their own husbands, that the word of God may not be reviled. And here, as I said, we see three parenting qualities of an awesome mom. The first quality that we see is this, and that is awesome moms parent out of love for their family. Awesome moms parent out of love for their family. And you know, love for family seems natural enough. You know, especially a mother's love for her children seems like, well, is, isn't that just come naturally? But Paul says here that younger women need to be trained to love their husbands and their kids. That's what he, what he says in verse 4. The older women are to train them, they're to teach what is good, and so train the younger women to love their husbands and their children. Now, it's probably not that uh, women need to, be, to learn that they should love their husbands and kids. As we said, you know, that's pretty natural. That, that just kind of comes automatically for most people. It's that, that we need to learn how to love in the best way. This is because it's not always easy to know the, the best way to express true love. Now, some situations are easier than others, okay? Sometimes it's obvious the, the, the way to, to show love. For example, the other night, I was, uh, I was going around the house, and uh, the kids were in bed, and I was searching for a snack. And I asked Amy, I'm like, so what do we have for a snack around here? Do we got anything, anything good for snacks around here? And she says, well, there, there's, there's a piece of cake left. And I was like, there's just one piece of cake left? And she says, yeah, there's just one piece of cake left. And 
you know what? That's when I knew. The loving thing for me to do towards my children would be to have that cake, okay? <laughs> you see, there was only one piece of cake, but I have three kids, and as a father, I would hate for my children to be tempted to fight over that piece of cake. So out of love, I did what I had to do. You know what I mean? Other situations aren't that simple, though. It's not always easy to know what it, how do you express love to your family. You know, think about some of these situations. Proverbs 13, 24 talks about love for your children. And it says this. It says, whoever spares the rod hates his son, but the one who loves him is diligent to discipline him. Discipline in, in regards to training our children has a great deal, deal of, has a, great, uh, has a lot to do with how we love them. Also in Proverbs 22, verse 6, it says, Train up in the, a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he will not depart from it. Training and discipline are, are key aspects of how a mother shows love for her children. Yet, as w one of my wife's friends expressed it this way, she said, sometimes you just don't know whether they need a hug or a spanking, right? Because it, it can be tough to know the situation and what, what do my kids really need from me right now? And learning how to demonstrate true love for your family is a lifelong learning process. And so we need to remember, though, to parent out of love for our families. And it doesn't always come naturally. It's not, it's not that kind of love that just comes out of our affection uh, because that, that isn't always going to guide you in the right way. It's, it's a love that, like God loves us, is self-sacrificing and giving and putting the needs of others first. And so that's the first characteristic of awesome moms, is awesome moms parent out of a love for their family. The second parent quali parenting quality is this, and that is awesome moms parent out of godly character. They parent out of godly character. In verse 5, Paul uses three words that describe the character of a truly godly woman. Look at this verse with me. It says, these are, these are things they're to be learning or being trained in, and that is to be self-controlled, pure, working at home, kind, and submissive to their own husbands that the word of God may not be reviled. Three key words there that I, that I want us to focus on, self-controlled, pure, and kind. These character qualities are more about who you are than necessarily what you do. Now, certainly what you do is important, but these character qualities should be defining characteristics of what you do in how you parent your children. They should be true of who you are. First of all, he says self-controlled. Being self-controlled means that you have mastery of your own desires. You control your behavior by love and duty rather than allowing your behavior to be controlled by how you feel at the time. You know, this is... This is obviously needed for mothers. A mother of newborns expresses this constantly. She shows this when, though she would rather stay in bed, she's exhausted, she wants to, just wants sleep, but the newborn is crying. And so she gets up and cares for that baby in the middle of the night. Her, her love and her duty to her child overrides her desire, and so she controls her behavior and takes care of the child. And this example is obvious, and most women are going to have this kind of self-control, but it's in ongoing, less urgent situations that a mom needs to learn self-control for the good of her family. Purity is the second word there, and that it, this has the idea of faultless or unmixed. Often we think of sexual purity when we think in the context of, of purity. And certainly that's appropriate in this context, as a woman should be pure in her love and her commitment to her husband. It also applies to her love for her children. Her love is to be a pure love. It should be not mixed with envy or conditions that the child must meet to receive her favor. A mother's love should be like God's love for her as his child, unconditional and sacrificial, despite how the child may respond to her. And in this way, she'll demonstrate purity to her family. Finally, kindness. You know, a kind person is, is, is a good person. They treat others well. 
They have a pleasant nature and a pleasant disposition. They're generous and patient towards others. You know, this, of course, is easy when life is going well, when children are sweet and behaving, when your husband comes home on time and the appliances work well and the weather is nice. It's a lot more difficult in real life, right? (laughs) Because often those things may not play out the way we would want them to. Now, if you think about these three words here, self-control, purity, and kindness, I refer to these as godly characteristics. I said an awesome mom parents out of godly character. And I said that these are godly characteristics because this is exactly how God treats us. This is how God treats us as his children. He is self-controlled towards us. He is pure and he is kind. And we should all seek to mimic God in how we treat others, especially how we treat our families at home. That should be our first focus, is treating our families at home the way that God treats me or treats us. Finally, the third parenting quality of an awesome mom is this. Number three is, awesome moms parent out of concern for God's glory. Awesome moms parent out of concern for God's glory. Notice the last phrase in verse 5. He says that the word of God may not be reviled. This shows the, the motivation behind everything that we do. In every area of my life, I should be concerned with God's honor. I don't, I don't want to do anything that would disgrace the name of Jesus Christ. And I want everything that I do to show how much I love him and how much I honor him in my life. As Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31, he says, whether therefore you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. And that includes parenting. Your goal should be, I want God to be glorified in how I raise my kids. You know, any other motivation, no matter how good, is going to have pitfalls that will potentially and most likely derail the direction of your parenting. You may say, man, I just want my kids to be happy. Or maybe you say, I, I'm just living and, and my goal is for my children to turn out successfully. Maybe you say, what would really make me happy is for my family to remain close and for all of us to stay together. These are all great things. I'm not denying that at all, and I hope these things will be true of my own kids. But there are any number of ways that if you make these your goal, you're going to be tempted to compromise God's word and God's will to achieve these goals. Parenting for God's glory, that he would be honored, must be your ultimate goal. Because if this is true, then you're going to remain faithful to his word, and his will will always be what you strive to accomplish as you parent your children. So you think about these three parenting qualities, and these are what really matters most. Love for your family, godly character, and concern for God's glory. And Paul says that we can all grow in these ways. And he's especially talking to young moms here. As Paul says in Titus chapter 2, these are best learned from older women. And I want to encourage the young moms especially. I want to encourage you to spend less time reading mom blogs and reading articles online and spend way more time with your grandma or a grandmother-like figure. There's nothing necessarily wrong with reading mom blogs, but nothing can replace the value of a real-life example of a godly woman who can show you how to live out God's character towards your family. Not only that, but I guarantee you that Rachel Hollis is not going to show up at your house and going to help you fold your laundry, okay? She's not going to do it. But Nancy Matsumoto will. I'm glad you're nodding. I didn't even ask her if I could say that. I just knew she would, okay? I knew she would. And she'll pray with you, and she'll encourage you, and I can think of probably a dozen other women in this church that would do the same. If you, don't, if you don't know who to ask, come and talk to me. I'd be happy to help you connect with a lady who can help you grow in these ways. 
But as we close, I want to encourage you in how God made you as an awesome mom. Keep growing in these parenting qualities, parenting out of love, out of godly character, and out of concern for God's glory. But please realize that none of these have anything to do with the ways that we often are tempted to compare ourselves with others. They don't have anything to do with your abilities, your looks, or your hobbies. These have nothing to do with the kinds of activities that you enjoy with your kids. They have nothing to do with the kind of meals that you prepare for your kids, how much TV your kids watch, whether or not you work in, inside or outside the home, or how up-to-date their scrapbooks are. What Paul lists is what truly matters. These other things, though, they so easily divert our attention and distract us, and it's, easily to, to, it's easy to compare and to become discouraged. You know, to, to look at another lady and say, she's such an awesome mom because she bakes with her kids, or she's such an awesome mom because her kids' clothes are always so cute, or she's such an awesome mom because she's fit and is so active with her kids. And I want to encourage you, please don't compare don't worry about what other people think. The only opinion that really matters is, first of all, what God thinks, and secondly, what your family thinks. And I want to encourage you, because take it from someone who is a husband to a mom, and also is the son of the best mom and mother-in-law a guy could ever ask for. What I want to encourage you is, every little boy thinks their mom is beautiful, and every little boy thinks their mom is awesome. What really matters most is your love for your family, your godly character, and your concern for God's glory. And as you grow in these ways, you'll continue to be the awesome mom that God designed you to be. Let's pray. Father, I thank you so much for, for the moms in our lives. I thank you for the, the many women who have influenced us, whether they're our biological moms or adoptive moms or or just ladies that have come in and, and filled that kind of a role in our lives. And Lord, help us to, to look to you and praise you for that. And Lord, help us to truly show the honor that they deserve. Help us not to take them for granted as, as so often and so easily it happens. And Lord, may you receive the honor and the glory uh, for how each of the moms and how each one of us treat one another, and especially as we raise our kids. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. As we think about that concept of giving God glory, please stand with me as we sing from our hymn books, number five. Number five, be exalted, O God. Gratitude and exaltation all wrapped into this song. I will give thanks to thee, O Lord, among the people. I will give praises to thee among the nations. For thy steadfast love is great, is great to the heavens, and thy faithfulness, thy faithfulness to the clouds. standing. I got just a few announcements here as we close. I want to say thank you for being here, and I uh, hope, you've, hope you've enjoyed the worship service this morning. I hope you'll have a great time honoring your mom or remember, having great memories of your mom, and uh, take extra time to do that today. You know, as we close, let me, let me share a few instructions here. We're going to, as I mentioned before the service began, we're going to continue following social distancing protocols even as we dismiss. So I, uh, please remember to stay separate from one another at least six feet. Also avoid shaking hands or other contact like hugs or anything like that. And uh, part of the executive order emphasized 
uh, re, um, limiting gatherings and, and uh, people interacting with one another in foyers and hallways and lobbies. So as we're dismissed, if, if uh, you just go out and if you want to fellowship and hang out, it's a beautiful day out. So uh, just head on outside and hang out out there and chat with one another and that would be great. Uh, as far as the future schedule, this is our first Sunday back and uh, hopefully it'll be the first of a long line of uh, times getting back together. <laughs> Uh, but uh, we're going we're gonna to continue meeting like this just for our Sunday morning service uh, throughout May for sure. And we're working out plans for when we'll resume other things like kids programs and Sunday school and evening service and that sort of a thing. The Calvary Kids service is going to continue to be online. And so I, I encourage you when you go home this afternoon to uh, watch that. Even if you don't have kids, man, you should tune in. It is a f- fantastic uh, program and uh, will really encourage your heart and you'll learn a lot from it. So uh, be sure to check out the Calvary Kids program online. We are going to have prayer meeting uh, starting this Wednesday here at the church, and so if you'd like to come and participate in that, come and do that. All of these services, we're going to continue to stream live online, so if uh, you're not comfortable coming to the building, uh, you won't miss out any, on anything. We'll have our morning service every Sunday, and also prayer meeting every Wednesday streamed on our website, so you can take advantage of that if you're not able to make it. But like I said, we're working out the details for for uh, restarting future other things like evening service and kids program. Obviously, this morning there were a couple things missing. We didn't pass out bulletins. We're going to refrain from that for a while. We also didn't collect an offering uh, through, with the offering plates. There are two boxes where if you'd like to, uh, to give this morning, uh, one is just outside the, the doors when you go out the main doors to your right, and the other one is just outside the main doors, and you go down by the, by the church office. There's a table with the offering box, and you can just put your offering there. Or, of course, you can give online or, or mail your gift in to the church as well, and we greatly appreciate those who have continued to to sacrifice and to give during this difficult time. Man, it is so good to be back together. Uh, I'm so glad you all could be with us. Thank you for all who have joined us online as well. Yeah. And I want to say a huge thank you to to all those. I know many have participated in helping out with online things. And even during this this distancing time, we've had several that have come in and done special music. uh, And that's taken extra time out of their their busy schedule. And Alan and his crew have have done a great job having all the things online. So thank you so much to them. And also, I wanted to say a big thanks to Aaron and the janitorial staff, because they've, they've stayed on. Uh, we've been able to retain our janitorial staff to keep things clean. Yeah, thank you. And so, a big thanks to all of those. And I'm thankful to you all who've joined us here today, and everybody that joined us online. Let's go ahead and have a word of prayer, and then we'll be dismissed at this time. Father, we thank you so much for this great opportunity to gather together and worship you. I thank you so much for all the people that were able to join us here today and also online. And Lord, I pray that your work would continue through this church. God, it is our great desire that you would be glorified in everything that we do, uh, in how we parent our children and how we interact with one another as a church. And Lord, how we follow your son Jesus as his disciples and lead others to do that as well. Help us this week as we uh, go from one another to continue to walk with you and to follow your son. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. Thank you. You are dismissed. Thank you.